Welcome to the Sleep Under the Bar podcast. This is your host, Tony Shadwick, or Numsky, as you prefer. Today is Saturday, August 3rd, 2013. Uh, this morning, we're a little bit low on panelists. We had some guys that were a little busy, but we've still got Mitchell this morning. Say hi to everyone, Mitchell. Hey. <laughs> and we've got... <laughs> And we've got Christian or Tubbity Do or Tubity Do. I keep saying it wrong. Dang it! Good morning. How's Christian. it going? <laughs> we were just uh, kicking around our topics for this morning before we went on the air, and uh, we've got a couple of fun ones. I guess we'll hit them in backwards order since the uh, the marathon is the freshest one on our minds, and it it just feels like Mitchell has a bit to say this morning. Don't hold it back. Tell us how you really feel. Well, my God, Jesus. You just look at the page in there on our big fat marathon thing, and there's this picture of her, and she's like 300 <laughs> pounds, and how could she even possibly think she doesn't eat too much? You've got to eat a lot to be 300 pounds. <laughs> just so that people know, and I'll put this in the show notes. I'm uh, stuffing my face, and I'm 205. Uh, there's, there's a blog called danceswithfat.wordpress.com, and I've forgotten this girl's name uh and she something does... reagan yeah reagan um she's a cabaret reagan dance... chastain ah she's a cabaret dancer but she is morbidly obese there's absolutely no mistaking this um she's butted Hopefully heads healthy yeah <laughs> she's a <laughs> haze proponent health health at every size uh proponent and she's butted heads with uh, the fitness redditors multiple times. Um, she's claimed herself to be an athlete, um, yet she she can't really um, she can't move around enough to be considered an athletic. Because person. she has injuries. Because she has injuries, yes. Yes, that's why. Which yeah, she, she was the one that was claiming athletic privilege, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> that she's injured she herself. She and Lance Armstrong, like, both are treated the exact same by society. Yeah. And just so that, at least my opinion, you guys are welcome to have yours. I don't hate a person because they're fat. I just don't. There are people that get themselves to a bad place, and they're looking for a way out, and they get desperate, and they start clinging to this, that, or the other. I'm not going to give a person... Problem there. There's yeah, whole... me neither. I just, I just can't stand the goddamn excuses everyone has, and they'll blame everything except for their inability to stop putting food in their mouth. Yeah, that's what gets me. There's, there's an unfortunate reality to that. It's, and they know, they know why they're fat. They have, they know exactly why they're fat. And this whole thing, it just seems just like a huge roundabout way to just make up an excuse so they can feel better about themselves. Yeah, anytime genetics is claimed is uh, just really – they must know that it's not genetics because 50 <sighs> years ago we did not have the same obesity problem and the genetics of the population are virtually identical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about insulin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that didn't me. exist in 1950. Did not. That is a biological fact. I will go to court on that. The uh, the thing about this that tends to get under my skin is the argument that they have sincerely convinced themselves that they are capable of being perfectly healthy people at the size they are at. Yeah. And that that's sort of mind-blowing to me, especially when you're able to present such a mountain of evidence that says otherwise. And I don't doubt that there is, you know, fat hatred. There are people that just are disgusted by people who are fat. It doesn't matter how you got to that <laughs> state. They are just disgusted and hateful people. Jamie Lewis would be one of those. <laughs> but that doesn't make everyone out to get you and everybody who is in shape. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember if it was her or Atchka that got all riled up with me over... Basically, I had made the statement that I, you know had been overweight myself at one point. I had never been obese outright, but, you know, I I got myself way fatter than I needed to be, and I managed to work it off between diet and exercise. No, and diets don't work. 
Yeah, diets don't no, you're work. Mistaken. And um, <clears throat> it must have had a genetic mutation like the Hulk or something. Well, it's more of a good for you. You know, your genetics and your situation allowed you to work it off. Whereas not everybody is that privileged. They don't have the genetics to where diet and exercise will work for them. That I I don't even know how to respond to that. I I'm not a medical professional. I don't have the biochemistry background to argue this on a scientific level. And even if I you don't could, you don't need biochemistry to argue that. Any biologist can fucking tell you that yeah, there's biochemistry involved in weight loss. Yeah, there's physics involved in weight loss. But just because we're a big sack of biochemistry doesn't mean that we I mean you don't got to be a biologist to understand this. Just because we're a big sack of biochemistry doesn't mean that we can circumnavigate the laws of physics. Right. And that's you don't really where I come back to. The uh, laws of thermodynamics still apply within the human body. I keep hearing Absolutely. this argument. Well, it's not a closed system. That's like, that's like the first thing you learn in physiology class. Like, I'm serious. They sit you down and they say, like, here's the big rule. Thermodynamics, like diffusion. That's like always like one of the first things they tell you. Mm -hmm. It's like, And people are like, oh, no, nope, that doesn't apply. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, it does, fucker. Well, the, the whole closed system argument kind of makes me chuckle a little bit because I always envision, you know, a water balloon with a tiny pinhole in it or a dribble glass, you know, a glass of water, and there's this tiny little hole. That people little... do look like water balloons, that's right. <laughs> the, you know, the concept that, you know, it's not a closed system is like, well, it's not perfectly closed, no. But, you know, it's well, yeah, close it's, it's enough. It's just about getting a good estimate of it. Uh, I was having a rather lengthy calories in, calories out discussion with a guy who's a significantly better bike racer than me. And he was arguing that calories in, calories out doesn't work. It's And uh, another friend of his and I were arguing it may not be perfect, but it's a good enough estimate to get you there. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. Even if calories are not the most accurate measure of it's how to estimate yeah it's it's good enough it's just like the uh bmi right so bmi would state that several of the actual athletes that the three of us know are overweight and possibly an actual obese one in there but the BMI doesn't apply in their case. Um, it just doesn't because the math gets all skewed once you're jacked. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, but it is a good enough estimate for the vast majority of people. And you just have to roll with the deviations and understand that if you're a Hayes advocate, it pretty much does apply to you. It... it uh, yeah, when you're carrying 100 pounds of adipose tissue, you're Jesus. not healthy. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, and here's here's something that's been rolling around in my head that I, <laughs> I can't... Up. Yeah, well, my head is very empty. There's a lot of room for the marbles to roll. <laughs> the, uh, the concept that um, your body fat percentage is the end-all, be-all, I've actually started to dispute that in my own mind. In terms of health? Yeah. And the oh, only... yeah, definitely not. The only reason I'm disputing it is because, you know, right now I'm carrying around about 25, 26 pounds of fat and sitting around 18, 19% body fat. Now, that would put me at lean mass in the mid-130s. So take that same 25 pounds of fat and let's go ahead and add 15, 20 pounds of lean mass to me. I could only hope someday, but... Let's do that. Am I inherently healthier from a fat perspective with that extra 15 pounds of fat or not? I mean, the argument is my metab metabolism would be increased, I would be stronger, and arguably I've done enough conditioning work to get to that point. But 25 pounds of fat is 25 pounds of fat. It doesn't matter how much lean mass I'm carrying around. So there's almost an argument in my mind that extra lean mass does not justify carrying around extra fat, even though your body fat percentage may be perfectly well in range of like, you know, in the 18, 19% range or even lower, maybe even 
But now you've screwed, skewed the statistics because you're carrying around more lean mass. The problem is, again, I'm not a health professional. This is just me thinking to myself, you know, does being more muscular justify additional body fat? And I, I have no idea. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah. The point I seem is, to remember there was a conversation that XTC was having with somebody where... Um, no matter if it's um, like having additional mass is stressful on a lot of your body's systems. So he weighs around 300 pounds and is a strongman athlete and lifts a whole lot. So he does have a lot of muscle, but right. he also has a fair amount of fat on him. Yeah. And he was saying that eventually it will lead to health problems. Mm. And that's kind of what I suspected. I mean, they're, at some point, there's going to have to be a measure that is more reliable, you know, lean mass to fat mass that at least gives you a percentage. And doing a perfectly skewed ratio, there's there's got to be a way to estimate what is approximately an okay amount of adipose tissue for someone of a specific height and frame. But I don't know what that measure is, so we're left with estimates. Um, I feel like we... We jumped right on to what um, Reagan stands for over here at Dances with Fat, and we never really discussed what the article was. Um, she's intending to do a marathon, which would be awesome, but she's planning to walk it. Because she can't run it. She's fat. Right. And she's going to take, if I remember correctly, five <clears throat> months to train for walking this marathon. Um, the, the math here, it's 26.2 miles to cross the finish line. And if she's walking it at a, you know, 10 minute mile clip, which is probably saying far too much. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we, uh, we could actually do a pretty good estimate based on the 5k time <laughs> that yeah. she, uh, recorded that was, I think an hour and six minutes. So. Oh Lord! So just can we track her on like Google Earth or something when she does this? <laughs> Twenty-two <laughs> minutes per mile. So I mean, the car will probably come by and take pictures by the time she's yeah four hours, four hours twenty-two minutes. So if she if she's capable of maintaining that pace and logically, just you know, everybody gets tired and she's gonna get tired. Mm -hmm. She's gonna <clears throat> slow down. But uh, or eight, twelve, sixteen, plus. Yeah, so yeah, it would it's going to be some nine point six hours to do it at the pace of her five k. To do twenty six point two miles. Yeah. Does that work out? Five k is three miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Six nine twelve. Um. So it'd be eight times four. So it'd be sixteen. Or thirty two hours. Excuse me. Thirty two hours for her to complete it. It'd take her a day and a half. To walk the whole thing. Um, unless you guys want to check my math, am I going insane there? I think a little bit. So, uh, an hour and six minutes for three point one miles. An hour six minutes. I thought you said four hours six minutes. Oh no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I should have thought that through. Okay, so an hour six minutes. You're right. It's closer to nine hours. Um, at the very least, they're going to be sending out the cars after most of the people finish to pick up the stragglers. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't see how we could possibly track her unless she willfully wore a GPS device. Quick, somebody install find my friends on her phone so we can track. Um, <laughs> if she does this, good on her. But I think the, the bigger concern that I saw with this is if pressed into doing this, if somebody came up to me and said, hey, we're going to walk this marathon tomorrow just because, and, you know, maybe there was some good reason to go walk 26.2 miles in a single day. I'm pretty sure I could do it tomorrow. My feet might hate me. I might have some awful mm, blisters yeah, from it, but I can be do that it. that hard. Um, she's... I mean, just because, I mean... It could be hard, but either of us, we just power through it, you know, no yeah. matter how hard it gets. It's easily within our physiological uh, capability to do that. So, I right. mean, 
Yeah, I mean, the longest I've ever walked, I did a 23-mile hike back in ooh, the early 90s when I was in Boy Scouts. Uh, they had something called the Lincoln Pilgrimage that was from Abraham Lincoln's hometown to downtown Springfield, where the library was, that he purported to walk to to get books and then walk home. And I remember being plenty sore after that was over, but, you know, I didn't spend months training for it either. We just went out and did it. Um, so I, I can't help but feel like this is more fuel on the fire that, yeah, no, you're actually not in a healthy condition. You're, yeah. you're, you're in a state that something that should be within your grasp requires months of training. Now that said, if she indeed spends these next five months preparing and successfully walks this, she will have laid the groundwork to do much better for herself, but I feel like she won't. What if she has like a heart attack halfway through? Will that just stop the health at every science movement dead in its tracks? Mm. <laughs> or will it make it obnoxiously twice as strong? Mm, I don't know. So I think they would blame it on fat hate. No, I I think they would blame it on, um, you know, it's not inherently healthy to go out and <laughs> do long cardio <laughs> because it can kill you. Yeah, it's definitely that, not the diet. <laughs> Now, we've mentioned, you know, I I take in a few stimulants every day, right? I have <laughs> stimulants, caffeine, uh-huh. ephedrine, you know, that stuff. Um, I consume quite a bit of it, and before I knew that I had hypersomnia, I was self-medicating with caffeine, and I just didn't realize it. Um, and somewhere along the line, I came up with this wonderful logic that one of the best things that you can take to help with a headache is caffeine. Mm-hmm. You know, just drink a can of soda, it'll go away. What I had the cause and effect completely out of whack. The headache was being caused by the fact that I had not taken in enough caffeine that day to make my brain happy. Therefore, caffeine is good for you. Um, <laughs> I... That loss of cause and effect, um, I feel like that argument would be thrown in. If if she hurts herself doing this, or God forbid she has a heart attack, goes into cardi- cardiac arrest doing it, the argument would be, well, see, doing slow, steady-state cardio is not good for you. And actually, that argument would hold up in some fitness circles, too, for completely different reasons. <laughs> um, yeah. Good done, Tabitha. <laughs> Tabata. I actually don't know what Tabata is. Jesus. I've been saying it Tabata. Uh, who even knows? But basically, um, you like sprint or bike or whatever for like all out for 20 seconds, then slow down, pretend, then go all out for 20 again. You do it like eight times, I think. I did it like with full effort once, and it was just goddamn the awful holy shit. I'm Isn't never doing it- that again. Isn't that just hit though? High intensity interval training? Basically, but it's a uh, shortened, you know, uh, high intensity interval training might be like you give 85% effort for a minute or something based mm-hmm. on a lactate threshold. Whereas for a uh, Tabata, you're just going all out for 20 seconds. Ah. What this tells me is when I've done hit, I've done it wrong. I was doing <laughs> it closer to Tabata rather than actually the way hit is supposed to be done which is totally unsurprising that i did something incorrectly when there was nobody there to instruct me properly <sighs> so yeah that's that's the big fat marathon you can go over to danceswithfat.wordpress.com to peruse that yourself and i'll put a link to it in the show notes so what uh, month is she planning on uh, running that let me have a look here i should say walking she said there's a program to allow her to walk a marathon in 20 weeks. Um, and assuming that she started her training this... We're talking December? I think? Late November? So, yeah, she doesn't say what marathon it is. Yeah, I don't think she would say. Why not? Because there are Redditors somewhere nearby, no matter where you are. (laughs) 
Oh, but we'll we'll switch topics. I think we've said enough of Reagan. Yep. How about Huge Jacked Man? Hugh Jackman uh, tweeting pictures of his uh, deadlift this week, stating that if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. Bub. Yeah, he's right. Did you <laughs> figure out how much he's deadlifting? 450, you said? I think so. Um, the <laughs> We learned that Numsky does not know how to count colored bumper plates, because I thought, I thought it was like 350 which is what I pull. And if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending, well, my bar flexes at 225, bub. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I thought the reactions to that picture were priceless. And yeah. in the picture, the fact that he's wearing Vibram five fingers just is icing on the cake for me because those were my lifting shoes for the longest time. And That's why I did lift in VFFs. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I was getting crap about that constantly. I, finally, I like them. Yeah, so did I. I don't like me to be the gym barefoot, so when I did I just throw those on. I don't know. The only problem I've had is my uh, left big toe gets really jammed up anytime I wear them. But, you know, other than that, I like them. I just yeah. switched, to, I switched to these, like, leather sketchers that are similar to uh, Chuck Taylor's, the Converse canvas shoes with the flat soles. They're not any better or worse. They're just different. And I've had him sitting around for years, so I decided to give those a shot. But, uh, yeah, he's just sitting there with the, uh, <laughs> he's on an Olympic platform deadlifting somewhere in the 400s. And we got this range of responses on Reddit, everything from, eh, that's not that much, to why are you taking up a perfectly good Olympic platform, to you're going to tear yourself up deadlifting like that. There was an article that linked off to BuzzFeed, I think it was. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah, because we all know that anytime anyone lifts any serious weight, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a breakdown of Hugh Jackman's latest twit pick on BuzzFeed. Yeah, X-Men actor tweeted a photo of himself deadlifting an immense amount of weight. But the photo becomes even more insane the more you stare at it. Yeah. You know, the yellow and green Vibrams, I'll forgive them that, because unless you get the all-black Vibrams, they're all ridiculous colors. <laughs> Mine are blue, but they turned pink over the years. Oh, really? <laughs> Somehow. I mean, the guy's wearing a belt. That's fine. He's not wearing gloves. He's not using straps. He's got a supinated grip, which is, you know, normal whenever you're lifting near your one rep max. First of all, the bar is indeed bending. Well... Yeah, duh. Who questioned this? His body is the color of a summer ripe tomato. Well, yeah, he's lifting probably two and a half times his body weight. Heaven forbid the uh, author of that article saw what short kid's face looks like when he's squatting. <laughs> his, his chest is literally frowning from the pain. Oh, crying out <laughs> loud. And they've drawn a face on his chest. You know, using his nipples, his eyes, and his sternum is a frowning face. <laughs> which, you know, if that's the case, everyone's chest is frowning. Unless it's cold out. Um, <laughs> this isn't a vein, it's a tunnel the government built that allows his awesome juice to travel throughout his body. And it's showing a vein going down his left bicep. Oh, come on. Because we know it's not a leg vein. Yeah, he's doing all this without breaking eye contact with his trainers. That's the funny what? part to me. <laughs> he's, he's looking straight ahead from what I can tell. And it flips around to show a reverse view for some... Oh, from the mirror. Okay, well. And then they make fun of his Vibrams. And in case you're wondering, he's lifting approximately 460 pounds. 463 pounds to be exact, since it's 210 kilograms that's on the bar. On the bar. <laughs> and it links to Reddit. Oh, jeez, guys. Okay, so BuzzFeed has a screen capture of Reddit it's using as its source. Good source. And then Reddit turns around and links the BuzzFeed article. <laughs> Damn it, guys. You know, I, I I love to say that I hate the term circle jerk, 
But when it literally comes full circle like that, uh, yeah. So anywho, that I'm just I look at this and basically what I see is a guy that's worked really hard for the last decade and has got well, himself... has a show for his 460 deadlift. Yeah, well, I'm not going to make fun of him. You're talking to somebody who wasted the better part of five years on brain dead programming and didn't make very much progress. The, the point is, you know, if he stopped right where he was and he maintained where he is now, he's not in bad shape. Yeah. He's done pretty well for himself. I don't see anything wrong with this picture, and the fact that there's people able to find something wrong with this picture kind of blows my mind. It's heavy enough to qualify in my book as being legitimately heavy. He's able to deadlift heavy. He's doing it with good form from, you know, what I can tell from a static picture. And, you know, that's about all there is to say, I think. I think a lot of the people on Reddit uh, fail to remember that it's not Hugh Jackman's job to have a really high deadlift, but it is his job to look swole on camera. Yes. And he certainly does that. I'm just relieved to see the man's legs, because the last time I saw a fitness-related picture of Hugh Jackman, it showed his upper body being, you know, pretty cut and well-defined, and then he had chicken legs. Absolutely no development at all. It was like he was the epitome of a bench and curl bro going in Man, and it's tough and when you're tall i was squatting like 375 for two by two and i had shit for legs a while ago yeah like, but nothing hugh, hugh jackman ain't tall and wolverine's only supposed to be four feet tall hugh jackman six two yeah holy crap they cast he's, a six foot two man he's to... just that wide wow <laughs> they cast a six foot guy to play a four foot character <laughs> Fantastic. Should have got short kid. <laughs> That's half the running joke in the comics. The guy is so freaking short. He, anytime he goes to get into a fight with Sabretooth, Sabretooth is having to hunch his back over to look down at him to get into a fight with him. <sighs> oh, well. Comic book nerd. Rage. Eh. That wasn't much. I suppose I could go over... My fail, since uh, Reddit has their uh, Sunday victory thread that they do. Oh, your squat? In our fitness. Well, the squat was one of them. I haven't done a uh, proper low back squat in months and <clears throat> decided I was going to match my one rep max to shut up another Redditor that claimed that, you know, I had said that a low bar squat involves more muscles, therefore it should be easier to put up 300 pounds than with the cambered bar and a high bar. And I couldn't match my one rep max and he's right but i think i misunderstood why he was right i think i'm strong enough to do it i think the problem is i've lost a bit of muscle entrainment on the actual form um i've since done two more uh low bar squat workouts and it feels awkward as all get out i'm having to do uh some hip mobility drills just to get my knees out over my feet whenever i'm doing the low bar for some reason so once I clean that up, I even whenever I was pinned in the low position coming out of the hole, I felt like I had the strength to drive the bar up. It just wasn't moving. It was kind of weird. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, that actually wasn't the biggest fail of the week. The biggest fail of the week for me, I haven't mentioned to anybody online and haven't mentioned to anybody outside my own home. Um I'm not embarrassed about it. It's just kind of scary the way some of these drugs play around. So on um, my hypersomnia meds, for various reasons, they also put you on uh, SSRIs, antidepressants, mm -hmm. uh, partially because I was legitimately depressed toward the end of last year and partially because that, you know, depression and hypersomnia. Uh, hypersomnia tend to go hand in hand. Uh, the doctor wanted me to start weaning off of these SSRIs, uh, you know, toward the middle of the summer, he wanted me to be off him for about six weeks and then come in and do a follow-up, which was no big deal. I managed to wean myself off, pill every other day, pill every two or three days, then whittle that down to a half pill. I came completely clean at the end of last week. About that time, um, I guess my body chemistry said, screw this, and I went off an emotional cliff so badly that uh, the middle of this week, just trying to get myself settled out. I went outside to do my 
deadlift workout doing heavy triples. And instead of being able to channel my frustration and aggression into the bar, I stood there sobbing uncontrollably while <laughs> deadlifting. Um, I wish I got this on video, now, just because the sight of it would have to be so ridiculous. A grown man sobbing uncontrollably for no apparent reason. That's the thing that really frustrates me. Why These, do you hurt me deadlifts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These uncontrollable emotional outbursts that have no link or very weak links to anything going on in reality. It's completely out of proportion with what's actually happening. Yeah, that was my fail of the week. Deadlifting heavy triples while sobbing. That <laughs> that was awful. I can live with the missed 300 pound squat, but that, that deadlift session was just horrible. But I have since made an appointment to go into my doctor because, you know, uncontrollable emotional outbursts aren't good for your career. Um, yeah. So, any fails with you guys this week? Or anything you've actually accomplished? Uh, I've uh, not been able to work out in four days just with how work scheduling has gone. So, Ugh. feeling pretty bad about that. I'm probably going to try to get in a four mile run or so. <laughs> the obligatory say goodbye to your gains. But then again, oh, the, since you haven't the gains are long all. gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. There was a there was another Redditor the same one that was giving me crap about my three hundred pound squat, I believe it was triple with cheese. Um managing to injure his trap while uh I didn't see what lift it was, but it was on a Smith machine, which gives me some small amount of vengeance over giving me crap over my squat, but I, I really don't like to see other people get hurt, so I'm not going to give them too much grief about it. What about you, Mitchell? Oh, I'm sorry. I was distracted by something. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Fails of the week. Fails of the week, victories oh, of the week. Well, yesterday I fucking... I've been doing Smith Machine front squats for my outer, uh, like, I don't know what the muscle group's called, like my outer quad, whatever. Yeah. It seemed to be working pretty well. But, man, yesterday, I fucking, really, it felt like I ripped my spinal erector off doing it. What? Yeah, like, I couldn't even stand up straight. I Ooh. iced myself all day yesterday, and now it feels completely fine, so. Uh. <laughs> I'll probably go back into the gym and lift heavy <laughs> later, because I'm dumb. Man, I had a good fail, too. I can't remember what I did. Uh oh. Ah, uh, what did I do? I don't remember. I did something stupid. <laughs> yeah. Man. Mm, what know. was it? I tried something dumb. Oh, God, yeah. I've been doing uh, this program for OHP, right, where I do right. eight sets of two reps and then replace the sets of two with a set of three. Yep. So I've been doing that with 145 for like, the past few weeks in, like, I um, don't I don't know. I feel like it's really good to just like get your form dialed in because you're doing so many sets. Yep. Um. So man, I was just like the bar was like flying up through the ceiling, basically at like, 145 uh, the other day. So I was like, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw 205 on the bar and get a body weight overhead press. And yeah, I like I couldn't even get like an inch. <laughs> <laughs> man, I don't know. I'll get it one of these days. Well, I. I can't talk too much. I did that for the longest time with 135. Yeah. And, you know, I hit 135 for three heavy singles last week. I was so proud of myself. And then, you know, I tried to in volume this week and then went back to it. And I, I couldn't even lift 135 up past my nose. I really think for OHP, the best way to do it is to just, um, like a lot of people, especially like Paul Carter, say for a lot of your lists, don't go too heavy where you're in danger of failing because like obviously you know an easy rep at 135 is gonna do more for you than a failed rep at 185 yeah. i think that's particularly true for ohp at least for me yeah and that's that's very true and i'm still getting the volume work it isn't like i'm trying 135 and going well i'm done for the day uh <laughs> you know i'll i'll work up and i'm then gonna I'll... go to golden corral oh god I'm going to wander off on that tangent. You you threw it out there. I'm going to wander off on it. Why not? Golden I, Corral? Golden Corral. Yeah, I went into that place. I'm going like, like, someday soon. I went in there with um, my family 
Mm-hmm. There's one in my hometown. I hadn't been in there in years. And there were two things that struck me. One, the, yeah. food, the food quality is abysmal. <laughs> um, it's you edible. Good jelly beans. Sure. Well, they didn't make the jelly beans. Where else do you get all you can eat jelly beans in this yeah. day and age? True. <laughs> I ask you, sir. <laughs> And then the stampede effect that my hometown, you know, I'm in the Midwest. I'm one of living in one of the fattest areas of the country. You're in St. Louis, right? Yeah. I don't know if you want to share that with everyone on the air, but now they know if they want to kill you. Uh, <laughs> the, I think uh, we mentioned it earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah, you did. All right. <laughs> the stampede effect. I would go mm-hmm. to... Um, go to put something on my plate unless it was the salad bar i was perfectly safe at the salad bar yeah but anywhere else and again i apologize in advance fat people i do not hate you however it is apparently dangerous to get between you and your food because it <laughs> will run me down you don't <clears throat> care and Man. being somewhat fair the skinny people will run you down too it there's something about an all-you-can-eat buffet that they suddenly just don't care who's in their way. They're not paying any attention. <laughs> they will bowl you over. It doesn't matter if you're carrying breakables or something that could be spilled. They will shoulder charge you, not even apologize, and go right, <laughs> right to the chocolate. Do not you ever go to like one of those like really nice buffets, like for a brunch or something, like yeah. at a country club? Yeah. God. There was Talk one we went to. Good time. Holy shit. There was one we went to Christmas Eve one year. They did a Christmas Eve brunch. Mm-hmm. And they had um, Amaretto Stone Sour in a punch fountain. <laughs> nice. I was like, why do they have orange juice in the punch fountain? My father gets a cup, takes a sip, and he's like, oh, get some. You'll figure it out. <laughs> it's one of the few times get I've just... some. That was one of the few times I got sloshed around my family. <laughs> that uh, I, I still haven't gotten proper drunk around my family. Last I time like I did, um, it, it it was kind of fun. Uh, you you guys know that I've spent the last three years at the University of Oklahoma, and we were watching uh, the bowl game against Texas A and M, where. Texas A&M thoroughly stomped OU. And it's the first time that they've beaten us in quite a while. And th- that was enough to get me to have a couple of uh, drinks. <laughs> in front of your family. Yep. So uh, do you remember much from the experience? or? Uh... I do. There was a lot of shouting at the TV. Uh-oh. Not for me. Sober. Yeah. Not for me. I was just sitting there angry. Uh, but oh. <laughs> my sister was really mad at the TV. Man, I, I'm i trying to think. There's only a couple of occasions that I have gotten proper drunk around my family. Once was directly their fault. <laughs> uh, the first one was at the rehearsal dinner for my wedding. So, September of 2003. Um we're out at dinner. This is the first time that my family and my wife's family had really gotten together in advance. I think they'd been out to dinner together once, maybe. Um, People were taking turns buying me drinks. My brother-in-law started it. My father finished it. And the fact that I'm a cheap drunk to begin with doesn't help, but it should say something that I don't recall how many drinks I had that evening. I remember what the first two were, but they kept putting glasses in front of me. And I kept putting them away. Um, so nobody was recording video, thankfully, so I don't know how I behaved. Apparently I behaved myself well enough because no one was particularly angry with me the next day, including my wife. But, yeah, when your family starts buying you drinks, it's uh, <laughs> it was interesting. Another time was, you know, I took my... Uh, Oh, I don't know if I got really sloshed. Went out to a microbrewery and got a full flight of beers. And I was expecting five or six beers. They came back with ten. <laughs> and they weren't the little shot glass size flights either. Each one was a half pint. <laughs> so 
I got some help finishing that off, but I was in no condition to drive anywhere. And Were they like strong uh, microbrewery beers, like oh, IPAs yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not a fan of hops, so I've learned to yeah. kind of avoid the pale ales. I'm, I'm more of a fan of like the stouts and porters and that sort of stuff. So, I've, I've learned my lesson since, and I'm a little more cautious about ordering beer. And I, when I go to these microbreweries, I'll order their flight before the food comes out. And since I have a penchant for fasting usually we will have gone in when i'm at the end of my fast obviously and if i'm 20 plus hours fasted the first thing that i put down my pie hole is beer <laughs> sorry <clears throat> sylvie apparently uh ethanol is not the most helpful thing for gains apologize to the god of silver hydra yes he's yeah. not been around fcj that much lately to he's, my he's... disappointment He's busy. He's funny. The guys yeah. over at examine.com. I guess we need to plug plug them more. Saul's been over examine. there. Like, what the hell examine. is doing? Well, I mean, I thought they were both kind of equals on this. Sylvie was doing the research and Saul was doing the publishing and uh, you know, I have absolutely no idea. I thought they both did the exact same shit. <laughs> we ought to try to get them on here. Saul's been so busy going on real podcasts. <laughs> people, people that have podcasts that are well established, and people actually listen to them. I don't know that he would actually have time to join us on there. My mom will listen to this. Oh yeah, my wife will listen to this. My wife listened to the last one and was able to point out all of the Bye. mixing flaws. That was great. <laughs> Heck, before we went on the air this morning, she was giving me crap about having to go to the bathroom. It's like, now you're not going to pee yourself while you're recording, right? <sighs> Only if I have to. Thank you, wife. Let me find a uh, let me find a bottle here. Uh, I think I got a funny is... story about that sometime for next podcast, maybe. All right. Well, I in a bottle. Oh Lord. <laughs> Which I've done. I I do not have a good relationship with the toilet. I hate long car trips. That. I'm sure people that take a bunch of stimulants as a consequence of, like, pre-workout stuff run into it a little bit. But this stuff, all of it, they're all diuretics. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly pumping myself with it to where at, at least once an hour I'm having to, to go use the urinal. And quite often it's more like once every 20 minutes to 45 minutes. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I just, <clears throat> I think I have no wrecked bladder. And I pretty much live off of, like, Mio energy, so that doesn't help. No, no, yeah, it that stuff is the nectar of the gods. <laughs> uh, you ever had that shit? Bio energy? No, no. It's I've just too weirded out by their commercials. Actually, oh. speaking of which, I have to step away here. I've got a cat that's getting into something. Kick it, oh, tits. <laughs> and then there were two. Yeah, so um, funny peeing story from me. Mm -hmm. I was at a race one time, and we were staying at this one dude's house. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, just, just pee outside. It's okay. And uh, that's not really something that I'm too comfortable with in a neighborhood where there are, like, houses right there. Yeah. But uh, on Saturday night, I got fairly sloshed and went outside and uh we were like headed out somewhere and i was just peeing like right in front of the car that we were leaving in and uh they were putting their bike stuff away and they just looked at me they're like hey man could you oh you're you're peeing great <laughs> would you ever during a race just like piss on the guy next to you is that illegal <laughs> uh my races right aren't really long enough to need to pee, but mm. plus I don't I don't know if it's just me or if other people get this too, but when I'm doing cardio, I think I dehydrate myself enough that I don't really have to pee. When I do cardio, it makes me get the shit like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's like I can't even I can't even do like a five K anymore. I just I'll get diarrhea like in my mile three. I don't so know. Like, why. Is is there gonna be a rest stop because I need to go super saiyan on a porta potty right here? <laughs> <laughs>
I throw up a bucket on my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back. Did I miss much? No, oh, just some, just some peeing. And pooping. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Apparently, I will need to uh, screen this podcast before I publish it today. Oh, man. So, since I'm back from getting cats out of the backpack over here, um, I guess we're actually about ready to wrap this thing up, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I got an eight. All right. Well, I will make this quick. Um, For those of you guys who want to reach out to me or send hate mail, I can be reached at numsky at asleepunderthebar.com, on Twitter as numsky, or on Reddit as numsky as well. Uh, Christian, where can you be reached? Um, if you want to find me on Reddit as tubidydoo. Spelled with a U. Yeah. Where you could actually mispronounce it as tubidydoo. <laughs> uh, Mitchell, do you, do you want to You want to reach me, no? you can say what you want to say to my face. Oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, well, that went over well. <laughs> Send your hate mail. Now it's too early to get aggressive. <clears throat> All right, and there's of course the uh, subscribe button in case you've caught this podcast elsewhere on the homepage of sleepunderthebar.com. You can click subscribe in the upper left-hand corner, and eventually one of these years, iTunes should put us in the directory to where you can hunt us down there. But for the moment, you'll have to click the pretty link. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Catch you guys next week. The bigger the cushion, the sweeter the pushing. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. The waistband, the deeper, the quicksand, or so I have read, or so I have read, or so I have read. My baby fits me like a flesh tuxedo. I want to sing with my pink torpedo Big bottom, big bottom Talk about fun cakes, my girl's got them Big bottom, drive me out of my mind How could I leave this behind? On Monday, it was my lucky Monday. You know what I mean. We know. You know what I mean. We know. You know what I mean. I love her each weekday, each velvet, each cheek day. You know what I mean? You bet. You know what I mean?